The Israel Hamas war has caused violence across different regions in West Asia, but fears of it escalating into a maritime war are mounting as well. This comes as Yemen's rebel group Houthis are attacking cargo vessels that are en route Israel through the southern Red Sea. The threat to shipping companies is further escalating tensions in the region, and I will decode the heightened regional tensions playing out on a new maritime front. You see, the Red Sea Red Sea shipping route is one of the busiest in the world. There are thousands of ships transiting through this stretch of water daily. Now, this next map will give you an idea of the kind of maritime traffic that I am talking about. The Red Sea is a vital economic artillery, artery, uh, artery, and is likely to become more so in the coming decades. As a result of the large oil reserves throughout the region and precious metal resources. This makes the route critical for the global energy security. More than 10% of the global trade passes through the Red Sea each year. More ships sailing from Europe to Asia take this route as it is a cost-effective route, crossing two of the 10 most strategic waterways in the world. That's Bab al Mandeb at the Red Sea's southern entrance and Egypt's Suez Canal in the north. You can see here. You see, since the war broke out in West Asia between Hamas militants and Israel, the maritime attacks in the Red Sea have increased. Here on the map, we can see the attacks that have been carried out between November and December. This encapsulates the current challenges faced by one of the globe's busiest shipping routes. You can see here. And with the latest threat coming from the Houthi rebels, Hong Kong-based OOCL has announced the suspension of trade route through the Red Sea. This comes after the world's largest shipping route, shipping group, Mediterranean Shipping Company (MSC) announced that it is diverting its ships away from the Red Sea. French company CMA CGM also took a similar step the day after, and Danish shipping giant Maersk and German transport company Hapagloid suspended Red Sea journeys as well. These companies, which have now suspended operations in the area, are the top five in the world. And shipping experts say the decision is going to be costly. Here on the map, this is the new route, which the vessels will now have to take. Container ships bound for Israel from the Far East or India. This is the route that they will be taking. This will now need to take. They will now need to take about 40 percent longer route around Africa and the Cape of Good Hope. All of the ships. Will be rerouted by the Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa, increasing the shipping time of goods by two to four weeks, and also raising the cost per ship by up to one million dollars. The additional cost will make goods more expensive for importers and trickle down to higher costs for consumers. That is, as ship sailing for Israel since the war erupted already have higher freight costs. As they need to pay an additional war risk premium that's levied by marine insurers. For Israel, now of course this is a cause for concern, as air freight is not an option since 99% of the goods are imported by the sea, and trade with Asia has soared. And around 40% of the cargo arriving in Israel passes through the Suez Canal. Now, Washington it wants to form the broadest possible maritime coalition to protect ships in the Red Sea and send a signal to Yemen's Houthis that more attacks will not be tolerated. Reports suggest the force, provisionally entitled Operation Prosperity Guardian, is due to be announced by U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. The Iran-aligned Houthis have attacked vessels in Red Sea shipping lanes and fired drones and missiles at Israel since the start of the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. It has heightened fears of a wider conflict in West Asia. Houthi rebels who rule much of Yemen say their attacks are a show of solidarity with the Palestinians. They have pledged to continue until Israel stops attacking the Gaza Strip, more than 1,600 kilometers from Sanaa. The Houthi attacks launched from Yemen target the flow of supplies between Asia and the West and pose a significant threat to global economy. The attacks have driven up the cost of shipping goods through the Red Sea, as I'd mentioned earlier. About 23,000 ships each year pass through the narrow Bab al Mandeb Strait, connecting the Gulf of Aden with Red Sea and beyond to the Suez Canal. 
U.S. Special Envoy for Yemen told news agency Reuters that Washington it aims to expand an existing international naval task force into operation, into operational coalition. This task force it's going to be integrated into an international coalition. The current task force in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, known as Combined Task Force 153, it's a 39 nation coalition. Commanded by Vice Admiral of U.S. Fifth Fleet, based in Bahrain, participation purely voluntary. No nation is asked to carry out any duty with it is that it is unwilling to conduct. Pardon me. The contribution from each country varies depending on its ability to contribute assets and the availability of those assets at any given time. The 39 nations are not bound by either a political or a military mandate. Contribution can vary from the provision of a liaison officer to the supply of warships or support vessels and maritime reconnaissance aircraft based on land. China, which is not part of the current task force, is a heavy user of the Red Sea route and holds sway with Iran, the Houthis' main sponsor. While reports suggest a new task force will soon be formalized, whether there will be any direct response against Houthi military targets, that remains to be seen. Now for more on this, we are being joined by Dr. Malcolm Davis, who is a Senior Analyst in Defence Strategy and Capability at Australian Strategic Policy Institute, live from Canberra. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, sir. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, so, my first question to you, Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin will push Israeli officials to, of course, define milestones for the war against Hamas in Gaza. With this visit, what does Austin bring to the table? Look, I think he's uh, bringing a deal of concern uh, that the Israeli campaign continues on uh, without uh, a clear path to their stated objectives, which is to defeat Hamas uh, and destroy Hamas. It's very clear that Israel does need to achieve those objectives, but how they do that in a way that doesn't cause needless civilian deaths and, and suffering amongst the Palestinian people is not at all clear. So I think uh, what Austin is bringing to the table is guidance from Israel's most important ally that they need to think about a new strategy on the ground uh, that r moves away from the sort of indiscriminate uh, air and artillery bombardments and towards a much more precise use of ground forces to engage with Hamas. Uh, right, sir. Now, we've also seen the ripple effects of this war be beyond Israel and Gaza. This is now threatening to turn into a larger maritime war as well, with the threat of the Houthis increasing as well as the threat of Hezbollah. Nearly half the shipping routes have come to a grinding halt as well. What's your take on the situation in the Red Sea? Well, I am surprised that it's taken this long to get to this point in terms of the war escalating to a wider regional war. Certainly, that was the concern at the beginning of the conflict that uh, it would quickly become a regional war. Now it seems to be going down that path uh, initially through this maritime conflict in the Red Sea. Uh, and it's a question of how the West responds to this challenge by the Iranian-backed Houthis that will determine next steps in the war. Uh, clearly, the US and its allies in the, in the Red Sea and in the Arabian Sea do need to respond decisively to these attacks. They can't just continue to let them happen and adopt a defensive only posture. So there's already discussion about the possibility, for example, of decisive missile strikes against the Houthis to remove that threat once and for all. But of course, the risk in doing so is that that would then lead to further escalation elsewhere. The Iranians control uh, Islamic and Palestinian groups across Iraq and Syria. So you could see uh, the Iranians decide to escalate the war that way or indeed in Lebanon with Hezbollah. So there is a risk, I think, that this could uh, escalate to a wider yeah. war, but I think we're backed into a corner and we do need to respond. Right. Now, talking of Israel's operations in Gaza, it claims to have found the largest Hamas tunnel network yet. While the operation also continues, of course, we've seen that the death toll is mounting and there is anger and despair in Israel over the shooting mistakenly, the Israeli hostages being mistakenly shot by IDF soldiers. Now, what's your assessment of the situation? How long do you think Israel can justify its operations on ground? And do you think there will be true stocks anytime soon? 
Look, I think they have to continue the, the operations against Hamas because if they stop now, then Hamas's fighting capabilities are intact and its command and control and leadership are intact. So uh, that would be a recipe for further October 7 style attacks in the future. And that would be unacceptable to Israel. What they need to do is go away from these indiscriminate use of air power and artillery uh, and uh, instead focus more on uh, precise use of ground forces. And they need to do that in a way that defeats Hamas on the ground. And in terms of the hostages, yes, of course, the Israelis people are, are clearly concerned to get the remaining hostages back. But really, you know, Hamas control the hostages and they're not going to give back the hostages uh, without something in return. And even if the Israelis were to release all the Palestinian prisoners held in their prisons, there's no guarantee that Hamas would then give up those hostages. So the hostages are a real uncertainty. As for truce talks, it's impossible to know. But really, it's pointless having a truce if in having a truce, you end up with a situation where Hamas is able to claim victory and then regroup and then launch further attacks mm -hmm. against Israel. Israel has to defeat Hamas decisively. All right. Well, sir, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much.